We're here today with Chase LeBlanc, founder and CEO of Leadagers, a hospitality consulting company. He's also the author of High Impact Hospitality, a book in which he explains what exactly a leadager is and how to make and keep them in your service industry business. Chase, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you. Good, good. Glad you could join us. So, for everyone out there who does not know, what exactly is a leadager and why are they especially important in our industry? Well, essentially, leadagers is a smash word, and uh, I started using it when I had my own business uh, in the 90s, and I felt that having manager as a job title was incomplete, because uh, if you're involved with, quote, managing people, you have to have leadership capabilities. Um, you have to be able to exercise leadership judgment. And so for me, it was a combination of both leaders and managers. Uh, those were the type of people that I was looking for to work with me and for me. Okay. So do you think those leaders are the difference between, you mentioned, surviving, striving, and thriving businesses in your book? Um, well, essentially, I view leadership as a role, and you could be the first person in line, you could be the last person in line, you could be groomed, you could stumble into it. There, there are many ways to find yourself in a leadership role. A uh, manager is a job. It's a job title uh, and very specific things that people have to undertake in order to be successful managers of the business. But in the hospitality industry itself, uh, there isn't anyone that is involved with the industry that doesn't know that you need to be customer-facing and you need to be facing your staff, team, or I prefer to call it tribe, because if you don't have those two constituencies, attention, if you're not supporting those two constituencies, you have a very difficult road ahead of you. And so, uh, for me, the people that are just barely surviving have not arrived at that insight, and the people that are striving or thriving are working in that direction so that the establishment or the group is actually functioning with a leader mentality, and they are embracing that concept so that people are supported in their roles by people who believe in the absolute essence that there is a heartbeat of a business that does not show up on paper of a top line and a bottom line. Right. And training... I know you mentioned in high impact hospitality is a big part of that. And in one of my favorite lines in the book, you say poor training can make employees act like wet cats hissing. Um, but with the industry such high turnover, how can companies train employees fast enough without these hissy fits? Well, I think first off, you have to start at almost 30,000 looking down on your business um, and and people would describe that as also the big picture but essentially you're going to have more success if you view yourself in the business of developing individuals and if you view yourself as rather than having a training and learning department if that that group, that core essential piece uh, is focused on clarity. And the reason why I say clarity is because most people leave their jobs um, because they're dissatisfied with a handful of things, one of which is not having their expectations met. If you are able to create an awareness and an understanding about what is entailed in 
the job, then you have a better chance at getting people to be successful in the job. And lots of times, uh, managers in our industry are essentially people who were successful in a role, maybe as a bartender, maybe as a cook, maybe as a host, and those folks get thrown the key. And so, Joe or Mary didn't show up. We'd like you very much to be a manager and open up for us tomorrow because you've been here for two or three years. You know what's going on. I'll come in at noon, make sure everything's going great, and then that person finds themselves sort of faced with a choice. Well, maybe I could be a manager. Maybe I could do this job. I could get some insurance. Maybe I'd get a salary instead of an hourly rate. And all of a sudden, my life might change a little bit. Unfortunately, getting thrown the keys is a pretty low barrier of entry into a su successful career. And so... Uh, for me, whether it's the manager or the hourly employee, if you can accomplish clarity prior to the engagement, you're going to probably set yourself up for more success long term. And in establishing that clarity with all of the mobile social revolution that we have going on in Gen Y starting to enter the workforce, they're going to have a huge impact. So how can employers use and leverage their value on mobile and social tools to define that clarity and help engage them? Well, to me, uh, uh, the onboarding process, which a lot of companies ignore, would start before you were ever hoping to have somebody become an employee for you. And so you can, with all of the new avenues available, social media in specific, you can broadcast your value. You can broadcast what it's like to work in your environment. Sometimes our industry has been uh, a little backwards in embracing change. Uh, this is one opportunity that really stands out, you could be on YouTube with your own in-house commercials that are essentially tailored by your team to try to recruit other individuals, like-minded individuals, for people who would have fun working with the people that they might see on a YouTube video, a commercial that was done completely by the staff. You could be on Twitter, and I know that there's a lot of people who are fearful that if they give up control of the Twitter stream, that things are going to go awry. But you could be on Twitter talking about some of the great things that your staff did at an individual unit, some of the success that was uh, created by the way you approach your interactions with the guests. We Last night, we had a wonderful birthday party, and it was the Smiths, and they live in Green Mountain, and there was 12 of them, and da 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 and it goes on, and you could detail how it is that you approach taking care of your guests, and this didn't used to be available at all. I, I think that there's a tremendous opportunity that companies are just leaving on the table by not using social media as opposed to just marketing or couponing, and they could actually be putting their values in the marketplace to show people what they're really all about. And I think that would be a strong connection to the, the audience that you were just describing. Who do you think out there is doing that right, right now? Well, I think that if you were to talk about a successful organization, um, aside from a few minor hiccups recently, but Chipotle is in the right niche because they're fast casual, which is certainly hot and growing. Uh, their growth has been explosive. And most of their messages uh, are driven with their heartbeat of sustainable food. Uh, they're looking to try and close the gap 
what they envisioned as a, a better way, a better path, and also continuing to derive their excellence in their operations. They, they believe very strongly in their systems, but they're letting their systems speak for themselves. They're not necessarily touting that in the marketplace. They're touting their value. So besides social media, do you have any other tech tools, tips, or techniques that employers should adopt today to stay ahead? Well, I think um, if I can go old school for just a minute, I think if you, if you were actually to view the people that work on the front line as professional, uh, and you do get to a certain point where there's a, a trust, it's been established on both sides. I really don't see anything wrong with providing professional business cards for people who represent your establishment so that when they go out to the gas station, when they go down the street to the market, they can invite people to come in and see them. And uh, I, I think that that's a nice traffic generator that's probably pretty overlooked. So old-fashioned networking. Sure. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I really can't project into a time when that would go out of stock. But LinkedIn is the new business card now, so maybe they can get two on there. That's true. I'm a big LinkedIn user. Uh, I, I enjoy it, and I think that there are a lot of people who probably push Facebook um, as a connection, and I think that that's a little bit more personal, and certainly LinkedIn stays a little bit more business. Uh, I think if you were networking with uh, your market, you might go to Facebook, but if you were trying to increase your bandwidth within your industry, I would definitely go LinkedIn. Right All right. Anything else you want to add, Chase? No, I, I really appreciate the time today. I, I had a lot of fun. I, I hope you guys uh, continue to spread the good word. Thanks, and thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.